The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Regular expression practice, so please welcome Dan Good. Thank you, thank you. Okay, we got more people in here, so I want to do my poll over again. Uh, how many people have written regular expressions before? Okay. How many people have written regular expressions for more than a year? More than five? More than 10? Okay, okay. All right, you, with your hand up still, you come, you come do this, okay? <laughs> well, I'm not an expert either. This is, notice it says practice. It does not say expert. Um, also, when I submitted the talk, I used the word advanced, but I realized that that's a really unfortunate choice of words because advanced is a relative term. Um, all I can really say is that the regular expressions I write these days are a lot more advanced than the ones I wrote 20 years ago. So <laughs> I think I've advanced along some some scale, but uh, I, I can't tell you whether or not these are going to be advanced for the rest of you. But uh, we're going to give it a try. Uh, so my name's Dan Good, and I've been working with Unix um, and regular expressions for 20 years, something like that. And uh, I am a programmer by trade. I'm a professional programmer. What I'm not is a professional speaker. <laughs> I'm not a professional presenter. So uh, this is just we're just going to try this out and see how this works. Uh, and it might, be, it might be dull as dirt. I like this stuff. I hope you guys do too, but it might be dull as dirt. So if you want to talk about something else or you want to ask a question, please be my guest. All right, let's get started. OK, first thing, this is easier than it looks. <laughs> this is repelling. And you know, in repelling, gravity does all the work. Well, in regular expressions, the regular expression engine does all the work. We just got to tell it what work we want it to do. This is a little preview. I tried to get something for everybody. So we've got some said, little C, little Perl, little, what is that? Uh, Python, and some Ruby. So we're going to try and hit all of this. But first, we're going to warm up with some light said. How many people use said? <coughs> yeah, all right. Who said said is dead? Said is not dead. <laughs> said is cool. So let me tell you the background for this. Um, I use Vim. Who uses Vim? Yes, all right. These are my people here. So Vim, um, and I'm a programmer, so I use tags files, right? Because you, know, you love to be able to pop on that key and jump to some other file and some other uh, find out what that function actually does. But one of the things that annoys me about tags files is that they're not very versatile. Uh, you build it once, and then you either have to tell them, this is where the tags file lives, or, um, or you have to copy the tags file to your current directory. So you might be in some tree five levels deep, and you want to look up a tag, and the tags file you've got in this directory is only for the files here, but you want to look up at across the whole source tree. That tags file is four directories back. So this is a problem I've had. If you can't relate to the problem, that's okay, but let's, <laughs> I'll jump to the regular expression. What I wanted to do is I wanted to take a tags file in a top level directory and make a symlink to that tags file in every child directory, in every child, grandchild, and so on and so forth. And that's actually pretty straightforward to do um, with find and a little bit of sed. So first, let's talk about a sed idiom. This is the HGS new line idiom. Uh, so quick hands, anybody know this one? All right, 
so I can teach you at least something. All right, this is good. H overwrites the hold space with the current line. So SED has two spaces. It has the pattern space, or what I call the current line, and then it has the hold space. And 99.9% .9 of all SED, SED scripts only use the pattern space. They don't use the hold space. But the hold space is cool. You can do so much stuff with it. So H copies this current line into that hold space, and G takes what's in the hold space and puts it on the end of the pattern space separated by a new line. So I tried to kind of make this visual. Let's say, our, let's say we had source common in our uh, current line. We do H. Now they have hold is a duplicate of that. We do G. Hold stays the same, but now current has source common, new line, source common. And then, since we don't really want the new line anymore, we want to do something else, we almost always replace the new line with something. In this case, trivially, I'm replacing it with a space. So how do we use that in this script? This script is, does a find. I don't care about CVS and SVN, so we throw those away. And this is an example of what the find line might produce. Um, some of you might recognize this as some Apache directories. Not all of them, I actually trimmed the list. <laughs> so this is what the first bit of said does. We trim off that, we trim off this first line, the dot. So line beginning with a literal dot, delete it. Then we use that H, so we copy this portion into the hold space. After that, we're using, um, we're getting rid of the dot slash because that's not very useful. Now here we're using commas. I know that looks a little weird, but I do this a lot with said. You can use any characters, the delimiter after the S. And since I have slashes in my pattern, I'm using the comma instead of the slash so I don't have to put a backslash in front of the slash. Are we, are we, are we good? Everybody with me? All right, you sure? <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. So next, we're taking everything that's not a slash, that's this character class right here, open bracket, caret, slash, close bracket, star, everything that's not a slash, and we're placing it with two dots. So this is the before, and this is the after server slash npm becomes dot dot slash dot dot. Now, is that particularly useful? No, but there's more to come. So, We are kind of flying by the seat of our pants right here. I think I'm the only person here who's using Google Docs for my, uh, for my uh, presentation. So uh, cross your fingers that this works. But on the plus side, this is not live. I'm not actually gonna try and type out any regular expressions for you, because that would certainly fail major. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to just simply insert ln-s at the beginning of the line and tags at the end of the line. So now our lines look like this. The path is turned into part of a command. And then we use our g, remember our hold space, to pull that back, throw it on the end of the line, replacing our new line with space, and then just simply adding a slash dot at the end. What we have now is a command that in each subdirectory will link back to that parent tags. And the deeper the subdirectory, the more dot dots we have. So the paths all work. And we just pipe this to sh, and we're done. And that's what the script does. So that's our warm up. Okay, we're done with that, I think. All right, we're going to stretch just a little bit. I'm going to try something a little, little more involved. Let's see how this works. Let's see how I am doing on time. Yeah. Okay. Some C. We got C programmers? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is how I would do a regular expression and return the first argument, or excuse me, the first capture in C. 
And this is again throw, a throwback to the Apache days. I'm using AP, I've lost it, AP regexec and AP pustrandup to do this work. But we're not really going to talk about this. The main reason I threw this slide in here was to kind of make a point. Regular expressions are everywhere. Um, it's probably the only thing that I've used over the course of 20 years, which I still use today. I use them in every language. I use them in my editors. I use them in Apache config files. I use them in make files. That's a bad idea. In make files. Um, just about everywhere. And you can even use them in C, believe it or not. And let me tell you, the, the industry I've been in for the last six years, which is the security industry, we do deep packet inspection. And you better believe we do regular expressions, and we do them in C. They're very important. So our right, second example. Forget the C. Just wanted to kind of make that point. Scrubbing bash style variables. So I'll give you the backstory for this. When we write software, um, or in, in the course of my career when I've written software and we needed to configure something, we frequently wanted to do, or I frequently wanted to do, the simplest thing possible. So the simplest thing might be to have a single config file and to use bash style key value pairs. That's simple, right? Then for your bash scripts, you can just source the file, and for your other programs, you can parse it. Because parsing, it's trivial, right? It's just key value pairs. Well, then you get coworkers. <laughs> and they mess up your config file. They, they start doing um, quoting and things inside your config file, and it becomes a little harder. So now you got to do a little bit more work to parse it. So that's what we're going to talk about this time. So what I'm trying to show here is uh, a sort of a progression. Let's say in my file I had this stuff here. Dot star is a regular expression which will match everything. Now let's say I don't want the comments. So ultimately I want the key value pairs. But let's say I don't want the comments. So what regular expression could I use to get rid of the comments? Here I'm using the character class, uh, not pound, star. And that does a good job of giving me just the key value pairs and getting rid of the comments. But it doesn't work if it's slightly more involved. Let's say I have a pound sign inside one of my values. That's a legitimate thing to happen, right? So this isn't going to give me what I want anymore. Yeah, I didn't actually put an example of what that would give you, but what it would give you is up to here, and you'd lose the trailing three dots and the quote sign. I should have brought a laser pointer. So what can we do to make that better? Here, I've got an expression that matches a quoted string. We've got the opening quote, not quote, star, and the close quote. This expression is going to match a, quoted, a single quoted string. So we've got an expression here, which will match a key value pair and get rid of a comment. And we've got an expression here that'll match a single quoted string. So if we could get those two expressions to work together, then we would get what we wanted, the key value pair without the, without the comments. All right, so let's try it. Here's try number one. This is using alternation. Alternation is our or bar. It says I want to match this or that. So in this first example, I just put the dot star up here to remind us what our input is. So this is our input. And in our first example, we're saying not comment star or single quoted string. And this is what we get back. We're still losing the pound dot 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 out of the single quoted string. Does the order matter? Maybe the order matters, so let's switch it around. <coughs> right here, we're matching the single quoted string followed by the not pound. But we get the exact same output. So this doesn't work. 
And what this tells us is the order doesn't matter. What's happening here is that the not pound is greedy. It's, um, when it starts matching, it continues matching. So since um, carrot, excuse me, since single quote doesn't start matching on any of these, they all default to this expression, the not pound. So we need, to, we need something better, a better way to put this together. All right. This is one of my favorite tricks of all time. And I didn't invent this, right? So this is, this is something handed down to me. Uh, and this is when I first knew that I loved regular expressions because I thought this was so cool. <laughs> Oh, that's the geek in me. This, this, I think this is cool. What we're doing here is we're moving the star around. So before we had that star on not pound. Instead, we've made this a group. And we've moved the star outside of the group. So what this does is this weights the whole expression in favor of this. This says match a whole single quoted string or a single non-pound character. That whole expression should occur zero or more times. So when we use this, our not pound matches for each character of that one. On the next line, our not pound matches once again, 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 and then the first part of the expression matches and consumes the whole single quoted string. And now we've got our pound captured inside of our single quoted string. So that's how that works. I, it's kind of hard to talk about this. We don't really have a terminology associated with it, but I like to call this weighting the expression. Weight as in terms of <laughs> assigning a heavier value. Okay, but you know, life is not, life isn't that easy, right? Double quoted strings. What do we do about double quoted strings? Well, we can try the same thing, right? So here's the, a corresponding regular expression to match a double quoted string. Quote, not quote star, quote. When we try it against this input, all we get is quote backslash quote. Now, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll go over this quickly for the, anybody in here who's not familiar with bash. Single quoted strings, you can't put an escaped single quote in them, but double quote strings, you can put an escaped double quote in them. And that's what's going on here. We've got a double quoted string with two escaped double quotes. And the method of escaping is basically putting a backslash. So the literal value there is, quote, don't panic, quote, in large friendly letters. Here is, oh boy, yeah, what is this? <laughs> okay. Here's, so here's, here's an analogy to our use of alternation. What we've got here, we want to match a an escaped quote or a not quote. An escaped, so here we have to use two backslashes because we want to match a literal backslash. We want to match that character or something that's not a quote. And we want to use that group zero or more times. When we do that, we can actually capture the whole double quoted string. So the first quote matches literally the quote here. The backslash quote is consumed here and it doesn't terminate the string or terminate the match, excuse me. The D matches not quote and so on and so forth until we get to our next backslash quote. That matches here. And then we continue until we get to the final literal quote. So now we have a regular expression that we can use to match double quoted strings. But we still need to match single quoted strings and the key value pairs. So let's try and put it all together. Putting it all together. All right, I'm using Perl for this one. This is the whole expression, okay? Can you see it here? 
So the first part of this grouping is our, our match for double quoted strings, then there's our or bar, then there's our single quoted strings, then there's our or bar, and then there's our not pound. And a new line, I threw that in there. <laughs> See if you're awake, paying attention. So this whole expression, if we give it this input, gives us this output. And this is exactly what we were hoping for. We're getting all the key value pairs, including backslash quotes, including pounds that are part of literal values, without getting the trailing comments. So this works. But we built it up piecewise. And that's a major point that I want to make. That expression, if you just look at it day one, that's hard to read. That's hard to parse. That's hard to, it's like, what? What is that? But if you attack it a little piece at a time, and then you put those pieces together, you can get very long, complicated expressions that work. And you know what they do because you can see each of the pieces present that you put together, like building with Legos. So now this is a stricter version. And this is a technique that I like a lot. What I'm doing here is I'm taking this expression, compiling it, and assigning that compiled regular expression into a variable. Then I'm making another regular expression, and part of the value of that regular expression is this variable here. So this substitutes all of that, not as a string, but as a compiled regular expression. So you can build regular expressions that contain compiled regular expressions. And when you do that, you can build them together piecewise, not in your head, but actually in your code. And that makes it easy to write very complicated regular expressions. And we're gonna sh I'm gonna show you that at the end. So this one's a little more strict um, in that I actually wanted to match the leading key value pair. So this expression says some bit of space followed by um, an alphanumeric minus the numeric part, <laughs> followed by uh, word characters, a literal equals, and then that expression that we used before. So this one you could run against a whole bash source file, and the only things you get back are the variables. OK, that's enough of this one. Oh, the original version. All right, so this is what I actually wrote in the original script. And it's slightly different, but it's about the same. What I actually wrote was something that would modify a variable in place. It uses Perl's idea of dollar under, which is the, uh, the default variable for any regular expression operations. And this one um, uses question colon to say, I don't actually want to capture something. So you can insert that in any grouping. And the only reason to really do that is to say, is to make it clear what you do want to capture. If you're using a lot of parens, then $1 is going to be something this time and something else that time. If you put this question colon in your paren, you can say, don't capture that, don't capture the other. I really only want, in this case, the whole thing. So that was the original version. And I thought I'd throw that up there just to show you that uh, I'm lazy. Because <laughs> that's not nearly as strict a version as the version on the last slide. But you know, Larry Wall would say lazy, laziness is a <coughs> virtue of a programmer. OK, so stick with this. You got this. This is, this is not hard. Remember, we said it's easier than it looks. So hang in there. We're going to keep going. This, this, is, this is an ugly path, right? You probably never in your life typed something like that in unless you were trying to break into something. But a fact of life is people actually do try to break into things. Uh, they, try to break in, they try to break web servers by putting uh, interesting things in the URL, say to get back to Etsy password or something. At least I, they used to try and do that. <laughs> they try and break other things. And one of the ways they try and break things is by using an obfuscated path. This is an obfuscated path that consists of extra slashes. It consists of references to the parent. 
It consists of references to the same directory. So what does, what does this actually, can anyone parse this in their head? What does this actually equate to? Does it equate to home DG? Does it equate to user share fonts X11? Does it equate to user local bin, user local Etsy, just Etsy? Well, let's try and do this programmatically. Ha ha ha, so I'm, I'm a C guy. <laughs> This is actually how I solved this problem in C. I used three character pointers and they move in different directions. So when it consumes a dot dot, it actually consumes the adjacent parent directory and then it repeats this process. That's how I solved it in C, but this isn't about C. This is about regular expressions. So I re-implemented that code in Python to show you today. Now, here's what's different about this. Most people would say you couldn't solve this problem with regular expressions. Um, and they'd probably be right if they attempted to do it with a single regular expression. Because you can't solve some problems with just one regular expression, no matter how good you are. Well, maybe if you're a lot better than I know about, you can. I can't solve it with one regular expression. The problem is those parent directories. That dot dot and the corresponding parent, you want to take them away in pairs. This dot dot and this parent go together. The next dot dot and that parent go together. Now if you try and write a regular expression, you're tempted to say, well I can clip one out. And then you're going to apply that globally and you'll end up clipping out the wrong things. And you won't get a path that's actually accurate. So the trick well, I guess it's a trick. The way to do this is to do it stepwise. If you put your brain back into said mode, said encourages you to do things in steps. If you can't write a regular expression to do everything at once, make it simpler. Write an S slash something slash something that takes something complicated and makes it simpler. And then write another one that makes it simpler. So that's what we're doing here, but we're doing it in a loop. So let me cover these two real quick. These are simple. This says, take any slash followed by a literal dot and replace it with nothing. But it also has this one little trick in here. This is a forward assertion. Who's used forward assertions before? One, two, really? That's good because they're worthless. <laughs> I almost never found an occasion where I really wanted to use a forward assertion. And sure enough, when I wrote this up, I found, it, found an occasion where I really wanted a forward assertion. The forward assertion here says it must be followed by a slash. Because in a path, you could have dot and some letters, and that would be a file or directory, not a reference to the current directory. And if I put that slash in the literal regular expression itself, then when this does its global over the string, it would end up consuming a slash which I wish to be part, which I wish to appear here in the next match of the regular expression. So this is exactly the case where a forward assertion does you some good. And that's what I used it for here. <sighs> and used one when I never used them and, and almost, almost would have sworn they should just be abandoned because nobody uses them. So this next one says, slash fall, followed by one or more slashes. Replace it with a single slash. Now Unix actually does this. If you say cd space slash 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 etsy, you end up in slash etsy. Because inside the kernel it says slash 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 is the same as one slash. So that's what we're doing here. We're just doing it on purpose rather than waiting for um, the kernel to do it for us. This next part, this is our loop. And this time, I'm using the version of the Python command, which actually returns two values, a tuple. I'm getting back the path, and I'm getting back the return value, or rather the number of replacements that were made. And that's how I can bound this loop. So this loop, while true, is an infinite loop. Now, this is a Python idiom. Uh, if I were to do this in Perl, I would just say while s slash blah slash, and then put an empty pair of braces after my Perl loop, because there's nothing actually to do in the body of that. But this is the Python idiom for doing that. 
the Python idiom is an infinite loop while true, and then if some expression break. So the sum expression here is return equals zero, meaning we made no replacements. So what it's going to do, it's going to consume, and we have to bound this with a one here, otherwise it, it runs roughshod and we get the wrong path out. We want it to consume a single parent directory followed by slash dot dot. We consume the, f the innermost one, get away from that speaker, then the loop iterates again and we consume the next innermost one. But because we're reassigning path, we're using the same variable each time, we're actually changing the same string. So we're consuming it in place. And as we pull them in the loop, we're mashing that together. And what we end up with, well, I think I've got it in the next slide. Yeah. So I brought this into uh, Python's um, interpreter so I could show you this. Uh, here's the first step where we're throwing away um, slash dots. And I think here's one and here's one, and they go away. Here's the next slep, step where we're throwing away many slashes together, and you can see many slashes turn into a single slash. And here's the loop. So the first iteration of the loop got rid of the dg slash dot dot that was here. And this is a, this is a, this is a line continuation, by the way. That's not very clear. The next iteration got rid of home dot dot. So that's gone from the front. The next iteration is getting rid of the x11 dot dot. Then it's getting rid of fonts dot dot. Then it's getting rid of share dot dot. And you know, you can see. Jumping to the end, that path actually is slash Etsy. Real world stuff here. We actually wrote this code. <laughs> Not the Python version, but the C version. So regular expressions, you can use them for so many things. All right, go big or go home. Let's, let's do something hard. So once upon a time, I worked for a company and we wanted to do some fun stuff with cron. <coughs> we actually wanted to manage cron tabs programmatically. And this is what I wrote. <laughs> so do you remember earlier I said you can use variables. You can assign a variable with a compiled regular expression and then later in another regular expression, you can reference that compiled regular expression to build up a more complex regular expression. That's what we're doing here. Now this is Ruby. So the other time I was showing you in Perl, this is Ruby, and you can do it in Ruby too. So let's see, what's my next slide? I think I start breaking this down a little bit. No, no, I would give you a cron tab, of course. <laughs> so this is some example input here. Um, and the only thing to note about this, we actually applied a little bit of logical um, interpretation on this. I'm gonna check my time real quick here. Wow, 18 minutes. A little bit of logical interpretation on this to say that what we wanted was key value pairs. So that I could say, throw away the mail to ticket paragraph or throw away the Fred Gen paragraph or change it in this way. So the, um, the logical interpretation we gave to it was a comment preceding a set of cron lines, cron tab lines, the comment is the key and the cron tab lines are the value. So we're getting, we're get, putting a key value pair interpretation onto this. And this stuff at the top, we're calling the header. So the header consists of either comments or variable settings. And this bit at the bottom, we're calling the tail. All right, so this was the first part of that class. We have a regular expression to match a blank line, and Ruby, I think this is the craziest thing in the world, but the white space character set in Ruby includes a new line. So since I didn't want to match new lines except at the end of a line, I had to write all these character classes to be open bracket, space, tab, close bracket. In uh, Perl, which doesn't include a new line, in the white space, I'd just say backslash s. That would be a lot simpler and easier to read, but this was Ruby. So blank line, that's a regular expression to match a blank line. Comment line, some white space, 
followed by a pound, followed by some more white space. That's a comment line. So the tail regular expression is either blank lines or comment lines. So there's the alternation in there. Um, zero or more of those. And again, I'm using the question colon here to say I don't actually want to capture this. Since this is a parsing example, what I do want to capture is actually pretty critical to me. And I don't want to capture extraneous stuff. So the next pair of expressions, here's one to match a variable line. And it's quite simply some white space followed by some non-white space followed by an <coughs> equal sign, followed by some more non-white space. So the head of that file is either blank lines or comment lines or variable lines. And when we put that input through the regular expressions, this is what we match. We match the comment, the variables, uh-oh, and we matched our first key from our key value pair. So that's a problem, right? Well. Actually, it turns out it's not a problem because of backtracking. When we actually use the code, the later regular expressions to match the key value pair force backtracking. And when it starts backtracking, this comment ceases to be a part of the head match and then becomes a part of the later key value pair match. All right. All of this code <laughs> is just to match that part of the cron tab. We've got something to match a number range, a number list, a step. This is a step. Days of the or months, days of the week, Paul Vixie's extensions, which are at, and then one of these words, reboot. So you can say in a Vixie cron, you can say do this only on reboot, do this only yearly, and such and such. And then all of those we put together, and I called it a run spec. So a run spec is either an extension or it's the number spec followed by some white space three times to cover these first three fields, a number spec or a month for this next field, and a number spec or a day for that last field. So that's a lot of regular expression just to match that little bit. But we're parsing, so we want to be able to take every kind of combination and understand it. Then I have command line, this is what I called it. That's just the run spec followed by some non-white space. And when we run that input, or at least here's one line of input that would match that expression, you can see here's the part that specifies when to do it, and there's what to do. So the user to run this as, and then the command that was run. All right, I'm losing you, aren't I? All right, I'll, I'll step it up, I'll step it up. I'm sorry, I, I knew this was gonna, yeah, sorry. Okay. So here's some more of that. Command paragraph to match more than one at a time. Key. So this, this, one's, this one's kind of important. <laughs> so key is going to capture this part. This is basically a non-blank comment followed by a command paragraph. This time I'm actually using the parens without the question quotes in them because this is the capture that matters. This is what I actually want to pull from the file. And then all, so now, this is, this is the big payoff, right? This is parsing. All, backslash A means start at the beginning of the string, backslash Z means anchor to the end of the string, in Ruby parlance anyway. Head followed by some number of key value pairs followed by tail. That's a regular expression right there. And when you use it, it matches the whole file. And if it doesn't match the whole file, the file's not valid. This is the rest of that class, by the way. Um, and if you read Ruby, this is basically just three functions. The first function, initialize, takes a cron tab in, and it basically runs it through all, tries to match that string to all. And if that fails, it raises an error. If it doesn't fail, it uses the captures from the match data. Part of it goes into the head, part of it goes into the body, part of it goes into the tail. And then the body, we rescan with the cap regular expression to actually get each subrecord. And here we're using a block to pull off the comment and take the key and the value and basically make a hash of that. 
So now we have a class that represents a cron tab as a hash table. And then two more functions, 2s, basically takes that hash and turns it back into the original cron tab. And does this, well, gosh. <laughs> I was really in the one-liner mode that day. It does this with reject and sort and map and flatten and join. <laughs> and basically all of that comes up with a single string. Valid, I like this, valid basically says run to string. If what you got back is empty, that's valid because empty is a valid cron tab. Otherwise, run the all match and say, did it match anything? If it doesn't match anything, it's not a valid cron tab. Otherwise, it is a valid cron tab. So that's a little bit of twisted logic for you. <laughs> the summit. We're done. Th that was it. <laughs> OK, so I, I write a blog, or I'm trying to write a blog. This is my son. My son <coughs> draws anime and stuff. So this is his picture of me, and I put it on my blog. And this blog is about regular expressions. So if any of this was fun for you, or even just a little bit, you know, dancancode.com. I'm Dan Good. I can code sometimes, or I like to think that I can. Dancancode.com. Okay. Where am I on time? I threw some extra stuff in here just in case. I ran short. I've got 10 minutes left. So tell you what. I'm going to ask if there are any questions, and then ask if you want more. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Oh, crickets, man. Oh, there's one. What's up? Do you see the name of my blog? <laughs> Regular expressions are largely write only. No, seriously, though. Um, the way I deal with documentation, if I really want somebody to try and support it later, is I do a lot of this. Because what I'm trying to do here is instead of writing that really long regular expression, I'm trying to write little bitty ones. Because pretty much anyone can pull out the MRE book and say, oh, that's one or more digits, followed by a da optionally followed by a dash, and some digits. And when they see that, and see that it's a number range, and see that a list is just a range, maybe a comma and another range, that's, that's sort of self-documenting. And that's about as good as I think it gets with regular expressions. Uh, frankly, I don't usually go to that much trouble. <laughs> because, because none of my coworkers uh, ever ask me to, um, to break down regular expressions for them. They just asked me to write them. So <laughs> if, you, if you follow down this path, beware. You know, this could happen to you, that you won't be teaching regular expressions. You'll just be writing them. All right, do we have any other questions? Uh, What's up? I just want to share an experiment. Please. An experience. Uh, <clears throat> at, at my work, they uh, give us a choice of uh, Windows or Mac. And uh, that's, what, that's all they'll so I got the Mac and run a VM and everything with Linux on it, but on the Mac side of things, I wanted to quickly parse out hash with sed. Uh -huh. And I don't know if anybody's ever done a sed command, but it, it doesn't see slash t as a tab. Uh -huh. so <laughs> yeah. What it was was I was trying to put a tab in. Uh, okay. And so mm -hmm. what the result was was, you know, data t, data t instead of the actual tab. So Try that next time that's that's great. Um, the, sh the, uh, the shell will let you put a literal tab in, which I'm sure you've figured out, yeah. the control V and then the tab. But you know, you get that into an editor, and editors like to take tabs and turn them into white space for you. <laughs> it's just all the joys. Um, all right, I'll throw this out here just in case anybody wants to hear it. So snort. Snort rules, anybody run snort? Snort's big in the, yay, we got one. <laughs> Snort rules does this fun thing, content. And you can put a literal string in here, but you can also put um, hex, hex values to represent characters. And if you put hex values in there, let's say you want to convert that back to the literal, 
to the literal characters. I can't do this in my head. I really can't. <laughs> so I don't know what C2 is. So I wrote something to do this. And of course, because I've been doing Perl longer than I've been doing most of these other languages, that's what I fell back to. Uh, and this is what I wrote to do it. And this uses some of my favorite Perlisms. And that's what I want to throw out. Not so much the regular expression, but just some of my, one more favorite Perlism. And that is the EG, or E, really. Does anybody use the E switch for your replacements in Perl? What the E switch does, it says, all right, so everybody knows S slash pattern slash string. And then we put a G on the end, and that says do that as many times as possible on a given string. The E says take the string part of that replacement and use it as code, evaluate it as code. <coughs> so in this case, what I did is I said match the content part. And I'm using percents here instead of slashes because percents look kind of like slashes. <laughs> Again, the whole said thing, using commas instead of slashes when you have slashes to match. So percents here match the content portion, and then take that match and run this piece of code on it. Well, you can nest this, believe it or not. So what I did is I nested it. In order to nest it, though, you need to, you need to use a temporary variable to capture what the dollar one pointed to, because otherwise dollar one's going to point to something new. So I'm capturing the dollar one into m, and then I'm using m in another expression. And that expression uh, actually also uses the E switch. And it does the hex, the hex conversion to a real character again. I can help with like that. It. We have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? Like you gave me a I good found idea. problem. How do you do that? It's like this. Well, I disagree with that. Really? Who would have thought of that? Let's put the word out. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. An OS that works the way that you do. 
across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP.